blockchain will have a very important role in the future of finance. It will be one of the fundamental infrastructure elements that exist. And I think we'll know we've got there when we stop talking about it. Today, the reason it comes up as a topic is because it is still nascent. My name is Sami Beza. I head digital assets and currencies at Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is one of the leading financial services institutions in the world and is known for being a key innovator of financial services. We're really excited at Deutsche Bank about the prospects presented by blockchain DLT technology. We believe it will, of course, make processes faster, cheaper, and more efficient, uh, and therefore better for clients, but also provide innovative products and services, many of which we simply cannot service today. Deutsche Bank's strategy is centered around four key areas in digital assets. The first is around bringing digital asset custody to market. We've made great strides and we're working with partners to develop a digital asset and current custody offering. The second area for us is around asset tokenization. We see the prospects of tokenized assets being a very interesting proposition for Deutsche Bank. Uh, and we've already started experimenting with products such as bonds try to tokenize those and eventually offer those to clients. The third area is around digital cash, being the largest euro clearer in the world. We're very uh, involved in conversations around CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, but we're also looking at developing commercial bank money capability on chain. And the fourth area is really around our post-trade settlement processes, understanding how we can make those more efficient, faster, better, cheaper, by employing blockchain DLT technology. We believe there's a number of use cases that uh, will very much benefit from tokenization. And when we think about what sort of use cases are the most useful, they tend to be ones where there is clarity in terms of the asset. There's a good depth of market of that asset, i.e. it's traded significantly or fairly broadly. And it's also one where innovation can fundamentally change the dynamics of that product. If we use that criteria and we step back, then typically we see bonds as being a really exciting area. We see private debt as being another area of, uh, right for tokenization, but also illiquid assets such as real estate, where there aren't perhaps markets today, we believe those areas will have huge potential in future. There's many different factors at play where we can see industry participants have entered the market and are developing blockchain solutions. Ultimately, we're a client-led organization, and one of the key things we're seeing is clients coming to us, asking us for innovative products and services. And that's where we see the benefit of blockchain and DLT. It provides a path to delivering solutions that cannot be provided in today's infrastructure. And that's really, for us, been the aha moment. We can see the adoption of blockchain technology has already started across a number of financial institutions. I would say that that's very much concentrated mostly on the issuance side so far, and it hasn't yet permeated through to trading or perhaps post-trade and settlement processes. Eventually, the entire value chain will need to be affected by blockchain technology. I think there have been three main barriers up until now that have really been headwinds, really perhaps more than barriers. Um, the first is regulatory and legal clarity and unanimity. So we've seen a number of regions have come out with regulations around using blockchain and DLT technology. MICA regulation, which is the markets and crypto assets regulation in Europe is a good example of regulation that's finally come out and helped clarify uh, the playing field for many industry participants. But moving towards more unanimity on that across different regions is gonna be a key factor. The second area has been around the development of technology. Up until now, some of the technology options have been quite limited for financial services institutions in particular. We can see that that's very much blossomed over the last few years. There's far more choice around the type of blockchain, public, private permissioned, but also the costs of processing on those blockchains has also now started to come down. The final piece I'd say is interoperability. Interoperability has two elements. The first is around how do I interoperate my blockchain DLT network with those of others. That's a legitimate challenge. It's one that a number of technology vendors are looking to help and address, but clearly will take some time to fully build out. The second part of that is how do I have interoperability with my current legacy infrastructure? That's a non-trivial task for many financial services institutions, but we're starting to see paths to resolving that challenge as well.
For Deutsche Bank at present, we're still looking at the different options available through blockchain technology. We do see that there's a number of different models that have emerged around public blockchains, private blockchains, permission blockchains as well. And we think each will have their role to play. We think it's unlikely that there will be one blockchain that will supplant all others. We actually think it's going to be a very use case driven approach where certain blockchains will better fulfill the use case of specific individual types of transactions. So we're still very much at that stage of investigating those and identifying the use cases that we want and the blockchains that are best suited to deliver those outcomes. Uh, it's the same way that nobody really talks about how the internet works or how emails get sent. We just know they do work and nobody really cares too much about the technology. It's all about the use case. And I see that's eventually where blockchain will end up. It'll be a key part of the infrastructure of financial services. My biggest personal insight uh, whilst working in the blockchain space has really been about the rate of change in this area. There is a huge amount of news flow that comes out every day, whether that's about competitors, vendors, or quite frankly, the market at large. And staying up to date with all of that is a real challenge. However, sorting the wheat from the chaff on that front is probably one of the key things that I spend a lot of time doing. The second thing I'd say is regulatory engagement in this space has really increased over the last year or two that I've been working in this space. Um, and I would say regulators are very much open to having a proactive discussion about some of our plans and products and services so that they can really get ahead of those. And the final piece I'd say is technology is also moving at a tremendous pace and it's helping us to try and address some of those long-standing problems around interoperability, which will be key to avoiding isolated islands of liquidity which nobody wants to see. I think Chainlink's got an important role to play in uh, advancing on-chain finance. And I can see that it really sits between bringing a lot of the data that sits outside of blockchains to life, but also Chainlink's developing products and services that will try and address some of those interoperability challenges as well. Thank you.